Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'm in on one photo raw 2022. And I'm talking about essentially just adding drama on purpose to a photo. I do not want to save the drama for your mama. I want the drama in the photo. We're going to do that here in this video. So I've got this shot here, which was shot from the top of uh, or the second level somewhere. Anyway, in the Eiffel Tower in Paris a number of years ago, I was lucky enough to have to be over there. And um, anyway, nice cloudy day, nice scene, all that kind of stuff. By the way, you can kind of look on the right hand side. I already did a few things here, just kind of some basic stuff that took the photo from that, which was, you know, a little bit too dark, a little bit uh, whatever, to that, which is a bit better, but it's not dramatic enough. And dramatic photos, um, there's a couple of things that I look for when I know I want to create a dramatic photo. And the first one is clouds. This is a uh, obviously a cloudy scene. So a buddy of mine uh, years ago, we used to call them HDR clouds. We shot HDR all the time. And we're like, how are the clouds? Do we have HDR clouds today? Because you can just amp up clouds uh, in HDR and just make them look crazy over the top and dramatic, which is fun. I'm not doing that here, but um, I'm going to add some drama, just not over the top HDR drama. So having said all that, I did the develop stuff. I go to effects. First filter I use actually is HDR look. And I'm just gonna stick that across the whole photo at 120, which are the two settings here for compression and detail. I'm just gonna leave that like it is, no adjustment. It looks good, I'm fine with it, I'm gonna move on. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go get dynamic contrast, which is one of my favorites in On One. It's just, it's just really good, it's really versatile. It's obviously great at amping up kind of the crunchiness, which you can see here across the photo, but also going the other way, it really helps to smooth some things. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert the mask and then I'm gonna go get a graduated filter and I'm gonna drop it about right there. And basically all I wanna do is um, just isolate that bottom. And let's see here, something about like that. I just wanted that uh, dynamic contrast to hit the bottom of the photo. So it's done that. So now you look at the before and the after, you may not be able to tell, but anyway, there it is. I'm gonna copy that mask I'm gonna go get dynamic contrast again. And this time I'm gonna paste the mask and then invert it so that it's just the opposite of what we just did. And I'm gonna close the masking window. And this time I'm just gonna go negative, like negative 40, negative whatever. I'm just kind of smoothing out the skies. Now I talked about crazy clouds, you know, HDR clouds and adding drama to the photo. And yet here I am kind of softening it up. I'm gonna do a couple of other things that will, uh, you know, help enhance the drama in the clouds. but. Let me show you, if I turn off HDR look, there it is before, and there it is now even having softened the clouds. So I still have some of that benefit, even though I've softened it up a little bit. Um, but now I mentioned kind of clouds is one thing I look for. The second thing that I'd like to do that kind of creates a bit of drama, in my opinion, is making it a black and white. And a scene like this, there were a lot of colors. There's a lot of blues and greens and whatnot. If you look around, there's a lot of nice color to work with. But drama to me many times is black and white because you can take a black and white and really push things pretty far and people see it and they say, wow, that's an intense or dramatic black and white. But if it's in color, they would just say, oh my God, like learn how to use the software. So, um, you know, you can get away with more stuff in monochromes. Now I am gonna go here into the blues and I'm gonna take those down 100, which is basically impacting the sky. And then I'm gonna go into the tone section. I gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, about a 15, and I'm gonna take the highlights down about the same, so about a negative 15. There we go, now let me turn this on and off. There it is before, and there it is after. So that's, um, you know, I think a nice, classy looking black and white, but I'm gonna go get a LUT, and it's gonna be one of my own LUTs. I've got a LUT pack that I sell on my website called Monochrome Matte, what is it called? Um, <laughs> let me go find it. Ah, Monochrome Mastery, I should know this. Um, anyway, it's available on my website and the one I'm gonna use is, is this Monomania 2. Anyway, I like LUTs quite a bit. If you're not familiar with LUTs, uh, maybe Google it. I've got some videos about it, but um, I'll try to remember to link to one particular video there. But regardless, I'm using one of my own LUTs. There it is. It's basically I'm double dipping, for lack of a better word, on the monochrome, which increases the drama. So I did, you know, HDR for the clouds, and uh, you know things like that to put on the highlights and impact the clouds and a dynamic contrast in both the top and the bottom separately to kind of increase kind of some some feeling some mood there then a black and white with a negative uh, 100 on the blue in order to really make that 
clouds sort of come back a little bit, and then double dipping by hitting it with a black and white LUT. So two black and white instances basically, which I think is, you know, it's creating a nice look. So I just stuck that on there just like that. And it's a higher contrast, a bit more dramatic kind of look. And that's what I'm going for. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna get split toning. And for both the highlights and the shadows, I'm gonna do about a 230 here with an amount of about a 30. It's actually quicker to type it in. And then for the, uh, not balance, uh, and then for the uh, shadows, I'm also gonna do 230 and 30. So let me do that. There we go. And as you can see, that creates a little bit of a silver look. It's just something I like in my monochromes. I talk about it every time I do a monochrome video, pretty much, because I do that same thing and I always talk about it. So. Some of you have said, hey, I like that. That looks kind of cool. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. If you don't like it, that's cool. You don't have to do it. It's just something I like to do. I kind of like that silvery look whenever I make a monochrome. So anyway, there it is. I've got two more things I want to do. The first one is going to be uh, over here in local adjustments. Actually, they're both going to be in local adjustments. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste that same mask from earlier. You may recall that I copied it and pasted it on a different filter on effects. You can use the same mask from effects and then paste them over in local adjustments if you'd like to, which is exactly what I just did, except I need to, uh, let's see, I'm actually going to increase the exposure. Let me close the masking window. I'm actually going to go higher on the exposure of about a 3.5, just kind of brightening that foreground a little bit. Actually, I'm going to make it about a 3, I think. I think 3.5 was a little too much. And then I'm gonna go get one more local adjustment and I'm gonna paste this mask and invert it. And so now it's affecting the sky and I need to fix that exposure. And what I wanna do is actually, actually I do wanna take it down. That is part of the fun here. I'm taking it down about a 0.35, but once again, I'm gonna change my mind and I'm gonna do about a 0.25. I think I like that a little bit better. And I think I'm gonna pull the highlights down just a little bit as well, and there you go. So two local adjustments on top of the uh, five filters. One, two, three, four, five, six, I guess, technically. Uh, well, five if you don't count dynamic contrast twice, even though I used it twice. Anyway, six of those, a couple of local adjustments, and I've got a dramatic photo. So for me, this was amping up the uh, HDR kind of look, even though it uh, was slightly removed or reduced by uh, the negative dynamic contrast in the sky, but dynamic contrast in the foreground, light manipulations in various places, a monochrome conversion, another uh, LUT on top of that that was also monochrome based, some split toning, some local adjustments. That's a dramatic photo in my opinion. Let me show you the before. Just a nice snap, right? There's Paris. It's a gorgeous city. I was lucky to be there. God, I want to go back. Um, there it is, and uh, you know, it's not bad. I would happily do that photo in color, and I have, and in fact, I did it as an HDR years ago, and it was bright and colorful and dramatic, because when I was doing HDR, I was all about bright and colorful and dramatic. But now, I guess I'm about dark and colorless and dramatic. Um, anyway, there's a monochrome, kind of dramatic, fun, just intentionally dramatic photo. That's how I did it in on one. It's a lot of fun. I hope it gives you some ideas. If not, Sorry, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. And until next time, adios.